Welcome to Let the Quran Speak. I'm Sophia, your host. The world watched in horror as seven aid workers were killed in Gaza. There's been much condemnation since from all quarters, and I'm here with Dr. Shabir Ali to discuss. Dr. Shabir, welcome to Let the Quran Speak. Pleasure to be on. Let's talk about what happened, Dr. Shabir. Um, seven aid workers, all foreigners, uh, one of them actually uh, Canadian, he has a dual citizenship, Canadian and U.S., were killed in um, in Gaza, and it seems like they were targeted. Each of their cars had signs on them uh, that clearly indicated uh, what organization they worked with, and yet they were struck in different attacks, like th- separate attacks on each car. Yeah, uh, uh, Britain is taking this uh, very seriously because uh, many of those killed were uh, British citizens. So uh, a Channel 4 uh, documentary um, showed that uh, they, these uh, uh, persons who were with uh, World uh, Central Kitchen uh, there to provide humanitarian aid. They were feeding the hungry, uh, and uh, they were in in three different, two, three separate vehicles, as you mentioned. They always kept uh, the uh, Israeli uh, Defense Force uh, up to date on their movements, where they are, where they're going, uh, and they also followed the. Uh, itinerary that is prepared for them by the IDF. This is where you can go and so on. Mm -hmm. So this uh, level of communication between uh, the, you know, the IDF and uh, the uh, world uh, uh, central kitchen staff um, or volunteers were, you know, would ensure that no such mishap could occur if I use a light word like mishap, right? Yes, their movements are coordinated. Exactly. So this level of coordination should have, uh, you know, uh, alleviated any, any sense of danger. And yet, uh, as uh, this Channel 4 News uh, uh, documentary pointed out, one vehicle was attacked and some of those who were injured from that first attack went to the second vehicle. Mm-hmm. And then the second vehicle was attacked. And, uh, and then uh, some uh, who were injured in the second vehicle uh, went to the third vehicle. And then that too was was hit. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this is appalling. It it needs an explanation, and this is what the world is crying out for. Like, explain this. How did this happen? And, and yet, what sort of explanation could be justified? Right? Yeah. It's almost and, like, what more is there to say? Yeah, and of course, some we, countries are calling for investigation. But what would an investigation actually reveal? Because Israel has been doing this repeatedly. This is not the first time. Exactly, exactly. Since uh, this uh, war in Gaza started uh, back in October, there have been several ins- instances of uh, humanitarian workers uh, being killed. Now we know, of course, uh, UNRWA workers have been killed with impunity, and now about two hundred uh, or more workers, aid workers, have been killed. But it's when the people from the West are killed. Yes, that, the that, that's yes. when That's when, you know, everyone uh, pays attention. Uh, but what is more than this? It's more than just the killing of aid workers. That That is the problem here. Now, some 33,000 and more uh, people have been killed in, in Gaza since this war started. And um, uh, it, we can say this bombardment on, on Gaza, this attack on Gaza has started and the siege. As has always been pointed out, two thirds of those are women and children. Mm-hmm. And we always hear the news report saying, oh, this number does not differentiate between uh, a civilian and, and Hamas fighters. Uh, but but it is a given. If you have two thirds of the uh, people killed are women and children, uh, you have a large number of people, like say twenty thousand uh, here, that have been killed who are women and children, and presumably they're not Hamas uh, fighters. Uh, so especially the children. If you have ten thousand children killed, where is the world paying attention? But the world pays attention when you know seven aid workers are killed, and yes, should pay attention. But but that attention should also so keep in view the broader scope and realize that tens of thousands of people uh, have been killed. Innocent civilians have been killed and, mm-hmm. and we ought to do something about this. Mm-hmm. I think it's still worth talking about those uh, seven foreigners because it shows that Israel is crossing all sorts of lines and all sorts of limits that we thought were not possible before this genocide, right? And so we see people, we see um, hospitals being destroyed, schools being destroyed, and now aid workers. Like, what else is there? You know, mosques. I don't even know what else, but, you know, we've seen children um, being held in, uh, parents carrying their children's dead bodies within plastic bags or backpacks, right? The scenes are unimaginable, right? And we are just looking at it from the outside. So I really wonder how Palestinians are 
are surviving in this circumstance. And we really need the world governments to take power, to take action That's and right. do something about this. You know, maybe um, institute an arms embargo or do something um, to show Israel that they mean, they're serious about what they mean. Yeah. Uh, the United States, as an example, is uh, offering, you know, condemnations and, uh, you know, expressing grief and, and all of this uh, and calling for an investigation, but at the same time, continuing to support uh, by, by uh, sending arms. Uh, so you're, you're going to send arms that are going to kill people and you're telling them don't use the arms. It seems uh, contradictory, even hypocritical. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the, yes, the world definitely needs to do more. The ICJ has uh, ordered Israel to allow more aid into Gaza. And uh, uh, you know somebody needs to set, step up and, and enforce these uh, judgments which are given by the ICJ. The ICJ ruled even before this uh, that there is a plausible case of genocide side here um, and and Israel needs to do everything to uh, prevent genocide uh, and uh, in fact the 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 responsibility to prevent genocide falls uh, on everyone, including the United States of America. But where is anyone uh, stepping up to uh, fulfill this responsibility? We don't we don't see it happening. Mm-hmm. So the pronouncements keep coming af- one after another. It's almost like the UN resolutions, uh, which have been uh, issued since 1948, and one after another, and they have just been uh, ignored. And, and, and nobody moves in to enforce these resolutions or the ICJ uh, judgment. And uh, we're asking about the West, and we must ask also about the Muslim powers. Uh, where, where is uh, the, you know, the call from uh, among Muslims themselves to say, okay, let's uh, defend uh, the people of Palestine? And I only call uh, on the state actor. We don't want this war to broaden beyond uh, beyond what it what it is. We don't want uh, it to result in chaos. We don't want individuals to take matters into their own hands and act as law enforcers. But where are the state authorities? Where are the powers that that run uh, various governments uh, in in the world, Muslim or otherwise? Mm -hmm. We'll leave it at that. Thank you, Dr. Shabir. You're welcome. The most effective, the most far-reaching da'wah we can do these days is on social media. At Muslim Media Hub, we're harnessing the power of media to spread the message of Islam. Want to get some reward from God? Support this mission. Check us out at muslimmediahub.com.